Don't quote me on that. missed it out but spring is that you it's very light out today and the lord said let there be light good morning <coughs> just button up my lab coat then i will do the thing that you always do or one of the first things that you do also if you're working in the lab it's good practice if you have your hair out to tie it back not really working with flames so it's not that much of a concern but it's better to be safe than sorry um yeah so i mean to clean up my desk just spray it down with 70 percent ethanol as a standard practice and then I'll give you a rundown of the tasks that I'll be doing today. Today I'm going to initiate the inoculum or it's called fungal initiation and it's putting the fungus. So I have my aliquot, so I make up the fungus from solid medium so agar and then i put them in a little what is this 2 ml yeah 2 ml or 200 microliter vials and these are cryo tubes so they're made to go in the freezer and because i'm keeping them at minus 20 i do not put any glycerol in it so we put glycerol in our samples we're bacteria fungus and i think they use it in tissue culture don't quote me on that but definitely for bacteria and fungi um, you store if you store that minus 80 for long term or even colder you can use liquid nitrogen freeze dry it but we don't use that I haven't used liquid nitrogen but you put it in glycerol and so the glycerol helps to prevent ice crystals or particles from forming in your cells and thus destroying your cells because they are living organisms it might just look like water in a vial but they are living organisms um, and so you want to protect the cells from being punctured by ice crystals so then you use um, glycerol so I'm just going to work out I think I'm going to make up 12 plates, so as you put these on 12 agar plates. So based on last time that I did it, I think I used three vials. So I'm just going to take four vials out just to be safe and uh, put these back at minus 20. So the three, and if I can find ice, I let them thaw on ice. So there isn't any like shock to the, to their system because they've been at minus 20 and then to just leave them at room temperature to warm up or to come to temperature. But if I can't find any ice or any of those ice pack, then sorry, shock to system at room temperature. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty early. I mean, maybe 7.35 where you are isn't pretty early, but it is pretty early because technically or officially work starts at nine you know nine to five but um you sort of start whenever so i'm at fungal initiation and it's three times minus 20 vials um so i made these up June of last year. So we have no ice. I couldn't find any ice, but I found ice packs. So I'm going to. Uh oh, don't break. I'm going to take the vials of fungus 
I'm going to put them on the ice pack for them to thaw on ice. So while the BSC is running, I'm going to collect the agar plates, so the clean or empty ones that I'll need. Drawing the vials on ice. It's about to take the entire day, so I just put it in some cold water. That should speed it up. You see, so that is the vials that I got the fungus from. I had some remaining in the bottom. It's very little. And I'm going to stain it with lactophenol blue. It's a dye that stains chitin in the fungal cell wall blue. It will provide contrast. Um, so that's one way to um, identify or distinguish bacteria from fungus. Fungus have chitin in their cell wall. Bacterium, they have peptidoglycan. So I'm going to use a smaller volume. So I'm going to use a two to 20 microliters i'm actually going to do 20 microliters and i'll use the smaller tips because i'm doing it outside they don't have to be style get the tip Oop. grab a slide they have a frosted edge and a non-frosted edge. So the frosted edge lines up to where you want to put it. Oops, sorry. So I did pull, pull whatever remained from the three vials into this one. So there's some in it. It's very hard to see. actually have more than 20 microliters in it but that's fine oops hard to see and then I'll put that in the middle like so drop the tip you press this plunger all right let me show you using a clean tip you press the pun the plunger oops and the tip falls off so this is a plunger I'm going to press it it falls off. I'll grab a new tip. And this is the lactophenol blue. It's one percent. I made it up in water. I'll just take a little. Okay, no. I'll take a little. Okay, the same amount, I'm doing a one-to-one -one ratio, and then that's a slider. I'm going to add it ooh, on the, the 20 microliters of the fungus. I'm just going to pipe it up and down to mix, and then I'm going to use the tip of the pipette to sort of spread it around, like so. Drop my tip. blue I'm going to get a cover slip or not yeah a glass cover and because I'm not doing this for any analysis or publishing paper it's fine I'm just going to drop the cover slip on it but there is a particular way to apply the cover slip so you don't trap your bubbles so you do like from the corner of the liquid and then you slowly let it down. <laughs> I still got some air bubble in it. So I let it incubate at room temperature for a bit. And while I do that, I'm going to prep the microscope. I added oil immersion to the side so I can see at times 100. And look at these babies. I'm about to inoculate the agar plates with fungus. I'm getting the plates ready. Those are the vials with the fungus. I am quickly labeling the base of the plate. So what's in it to date with my initials. I'll do that for all the plates. Once that's done, I will get ready to 
apply the fungus onto the plate. So I set it to 500 microliters because that's the volume I want to add to each plate. And I'm doing 12 plates. I am putting on the tip. So it's a micro pipette tip on the pipette. Those are sterile. Um, I just check to ensure that it's like steady or sturdy onto the pipette base. I will vortex or pipe it up and down the fungus to mix it well. So you see it looks like water, like there's nothing in it, but there is fungus in it. I will quickly sort of flame the mouth. It's not an open flame or you can vortex it as a means of mixing. Then I'll do that for all of them and each time I open it or I need to use it, I'll vortex or pipe it up and down to mix. I will, because the pipe is already set to 500 microliters, so that's the volume that I need, 0.5 ml. I will insert the pipe tip, so it should be straight on vertical, into that cryo tube and that's how I open it. I have the lid and one um, between my finger, I flame the mouth. And it's not vertical because I wanted you to see what I'm doing, but it goes into the, the liquid, not too down to the bottom. Flame it before I close it. You want to keep the lid off the surface. Then I will take the plate, flip it over, right? That's the agar. And then I'll add up the liquid slowly. So I like putting it. In different areas because I'm not doing your typical um, one um, streaking I'm just going to streak across because I'm not trying to get pure colonies I already know that the colony is pure and because it's the same volume and the same microbe that is my inoculating loop I forgot to heat it to sterilize it using it flame before so I'm just going to put it into the back incinerator so that part that I'm touching the other part is the handle it gets red hot and once it gets red hot i'll take it out put it to cool um, or alternatively i can touch it against the inside of the agar plate um, apart from where i put the fungus to cool it because if it's too hot it will kill the fungus so that's what i'm trying to do i won't touch that red ring part of it that darker part because that's a sterile area and if i touch it then i'll contaminate it and we don't want that and so just waiting for it to cool down a bit and then once it's cool and i think enough time has elapsed so maybe 30 seconds to a minute i will um start streaking so see i touch it against the agar to further cool it and then I will just streak it right across versus your typical streaking in quadrants. I don't want to get pure colonies. It's already pure. So I just go across. It's like painting. And I try to be careful so I don't gorge the agar. So gorging the agar is just like tricking into it or breaking it. So I'll streak across. And I mean, you look at it and it looks like there's nothing on it. You can sort of see the streak line on top of the agar, but you don't see anything else but there is fungus on it trust me <laughs> so i'll do that several times i'll turn the plate to sort of get all surfaces and once i do that then i mean i'll have relatively enough to harvest when it's time to harvest it so just keep doing that until it's dried and once it's dried i will just do the remaining plates in the same fashion I will flame the inoculating loop, that's what I'm doing, to sterilize it. So I put it into the back incinerator. Um, see, looks like there's nothing on it. I will then replace the lid, put it to my left, because I work right to left, let it air dry further. Um, I'll grab more plates and essentially repeat the process. So that's what you'll see me do again. I'll just repeat the process, labeling plates, inoculating, etc. So I let you watch that. Once 
once I'm finishing a plating and the plate have dried, I'll apply perfume and then I put them back into the bag, spray down everything before I take it out, turn off the back incinerator, let the BAC equalize. That's what I'm doing with my hands, letting it equalize and then I will move out of the plate. Incubate the plates for two days on the near UV and two days later so that's what Friday I'm going to ask someone to move them from this spot and put them into an incubator at 18 degrees Celsius with regular light Closing the sash. It looks better when the lights are off. Done for the day, turning the lights off. Bye. See? So in that vial that looks like it contains water, it has numerous spores of my fungus or it could be your bacteria but I'm just going to use fungus and then it's pretty transferable if you're working with bacteria and so I'll take I took 500 microliters of this of this so 0.5 ml and I put it on the plate so if I put one drop that's fine but I decided to streak it or spread it across so that it grows faster more surface area so the ideally or the principle behind it is that from your spore that you put on your plate so from your single microbe in my case there are several in it you'll have it reproducing to produce daughters or progeny or identical descendant of that original single one and so those represent your colony or your colony forming unit right so different types of microbes will have a different morphology so shape, size, um, are they raised, or is the surface raised, is it flat, is it shiny, is it dull, so apparent. So they have several different morphology and that's what microbiologists, they tend to use those morphological features to distinguish between the microbe that they are interested in growing and then the ones that they're not interested in growing. And that's one way I know if I have contamination. So in my case, when I grow it on that nutrient-rich agar, right, and then I incubate it under those specific conditions for that particular microbe, I know that, or I'm expecting that I have a pure colony because I ensure that my aseptic technique, which is just a, a technique that is core to microbiology work, and the good laboratory practices, it's just a series of steps that you take to ensure that what you're doing is sterile, your practices are up to standard, so I know that my steps leading up to that have been really good with them. So I'm only expecting that only my microbe of interest should grow on the plate. However, say if I came in and something had gone wrong and I wasn't very careful and I missed a step or something, then if I see a different colony on the plate, then I know that I have contamination because I'm expecting the cells on the plate to look peachish, orangish, pinkish, it's going to be hard for you to see and I'm expecting that they look yeast like they should look buddish right so if I see something that is fuzzy or slimy or milky I for sure know that my plate is contaminated I can't use that plate I have to use something else or I might have to start the whole process over so yeah plates that you watch me inoculate um, last week so this is the 18 degrees celsius incubator with light but there's already growth on it well that's condensation but there's already growth <laughs>